So before we go any further, we're going to talk about mortgages. Your payment is based on some factor. So let's say you're borrowing $200,000, a flat $200,000 at 6% interest for 30 years. Can anybody tell me what the monthly principal and interest payment is going to be for that off the top of their head or even using a pencil? No, there's a chart for that. Okay. On page 412 in your book, on page 412 in your book, you have what's called a loan factor chart. So this loan factor chart, and I know it's going to be small on my screen, and I apologize, I can't get it any larger than this, okay? What this loan factor chart says is this. I want to know what my rate of return is, and I want to know how long I am taking the loan. So I said we are going to be 6%. And over here, 30 years. So I'm going to take my line and I'm going to draw across and I'm going to draw it down to where these two lines intersect. And this says $6. And what does that $6 mean? It means that if I borrowed $1,000 for 30 years at 6% interest, it would cost me $6 a month for 360 months, okay? So this is called a loan factor table. That's what this is, all right? So if I was looking at something else, a 5% loan for 20 years, I would come down, uh, I'd come across, and it would be $6.60 a month for 240 months, right? Per thousand. Now, what did I say? I said we were borrowing 200,000. So forget this one first because we're dealing with the other one. We're borrowing $200,000. So how many thousands do I have if I borrow $200,000? I have 200, right? I have 200. So I would take my 200. I would take my 200. Right, 200,000 divided by 1,000, and that's going to give me 200. 200 times $6 a month, that's going to give me a principal and interest payment, nice and neatly, of $1,200 a month. I didn't have to be a genius. I just had to use a chart. So let's say, all right, we'll do this. We'll use the same factor, right? If it was for 7% for 20 years, I would come over here and say, all right, 20 years, come down this way. This is where those numbers meet. So it would be $7.75 per month for 240 payments, right? So multiply uh, 200 times 775. We're going to get about 1500 and some dollars, right, a month, if that's the case. Uh, 200 times 7.75. $1,550, not bad math out of the top of my head, right? So that's what it would cost you per month for principal and interest, just principal and interest. All right, so we've established here that our monthly payment for principal and interest is going to be $1,200 a month. Everybody with me? You're all happy. All right, let's do something here. Let's play some game here. I'm borrowing $200,000 at 6% for 30 years, okay? So we've already figured that it was gonna be, my payment's gonna be 1,200 a month. I wanna know how much of that first month's pro money goes to principal and how much goes to interest. So here's what I gotta do. If I borrow $200,000, 200,000 times 6%, how much is that for a year's worth of interest? A year's worth of interest at 6% is going to be what, $12,000? Somebody use a calculator to make sure I'm right. 12,000, thank you, Reagan. So that means that I'm going to pay for the first month, I'm going to pay $1,000 in interest because I'm going to divide this by 12, right? So for the first month, $1,000 is going to interest. 
I'm going to come back to my 1,200. I'm going to subtract 1,000. I'm going to subtract 1,000. And that means that this is going to be my interest. This is going to be my payment, which is going to leave me how much for my principal? 200, right? Principal. That's too easy, right? That's month one. What happens in month two? Do I still owe $200,000? I don't owe 200000 anymore, do I? So in month two, I get to pay something a little different. All right? Now I owe, I owe $200 less. So $200,000 I owed the first month. Minus the 200 I paid off, that means that I have 9199800 $9, That's what I still owe. Times 6%. Somebody multiply that out for me. 199800 times 6%. 11.988. 11988 for the year, divide that by 12, I need one month. 999. Okay, pretty convenient. All right. So our we have interest here for the month of $999. I'm still paying my 1200 minus 999. And that means what? How much is going to interest? $201. I mean, this is interest, this is principal, because this is principal and interest. So after month two, you notice a fact, you notice something here? I paid less in interest. Yes, it's only a dollar, but I paid more in principal, but I still made the same payment. So after month two, I'm going to take this 199,800 is what I owed after the first after the first payment. And I'm going to subtract two hundred and one dollars because now I'm paying that one ninety nine. Uh, what is this? Five ninety nine. So now I can do this again for the third month, and I can take this um, change color here just for for grins and giggles. I can take my one ninety nine five ninety nine. That's what I know after paying two months two payments. I'm going to multiply that by 6%. Somebody tell me what that is. 11,975 and 94 cents divided by 12. I need one month. 11,975, 94 divided by 12. 998. So I go back to my 1200 a month that I pay. Subtract 998 because that's my interest. How much principal am I going to pay? $202 principal. All right. B and I. So now what happens is I go back to that and now I have a new number 199.599 minus 202. So after I've made three payments, I owe 199.397. If we had enough time, we could work out all 360 payments exactly this way. And at the end of that 360 payments, we would pay a very little bit of interest and a whole lot of principal. And it would work out to squadoosh. We'd run out. That's exactly how your mortgage works. It is always simple interest. We didn't do anything tricky here, did we? We didn't do anything chaotic. No fun, no fun facts, and our fingers never left our hands. We all we did was multiplication and division. Because why should I pay six percent on two hundred thousand? All in, in, I don't owe two hundred thousand anymore after the first month, do I? I owe less. Six hundred for six percent of that. Next month I'll owe less. Or less. Now in this particular case, it gets smaller every time. The marginal, but as we got to month 45 and 50, that would start to accumulate. It might be three or 400, and it would keep going up from there. 
Okay. So mortgages are always simple interest, always simple interest. Nothing tricky about them. If you had the time and the uh, that loan factor chart and you just went through it and figured out what the payment was going to be, you could do this 360 times. Why you would need to do this, just trust that it works. You can put it in a calculator and they can do an amortization schedule. Um, I have something called Carl's. Carl's mortgage calendar on my phone. If I key this number, if I key these numbers in, it would give me every payment, principal and interest payment for the whole 360. There's no reason to do it this way. You just need to see it this way. Because there's going to be a question on the test. And I know that there's a question in our workbook, in our workbook, that's going to say, how much do you owe in principal after two payments? Or how much do you owe after a payment? How much principal you have? So you got to go back and figure it out. This is the way you do it. If you're paying $1,000 a month and you're paying 6% on whatever number, you figure that out, that's your interest. The balance is principal, right? It's principal and interest. Subtract it from what you got. There you go. Always simple interest. It is not complicated. Nothing crazy. No lot, no. Logarithms, no tangents, no integrals, no derivatives, no nothing. Math. Addition. Right? Addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. Nothing tricky. So what I just showed you is the way, if you had to put it in a graph, this is the way it would work. Okay? Now, I have a question for you. If I was paying $1,200 a month, for 360 months, how much interest would I pay over the life of the loan? How much interest would I pay over the life of the loan? I'm paying $1,200 a month, 360 months. Someone tell me how much interest I'm gonna pay over the life of the loan. Now remember we borrowed 200,000. That's our number. So we're going to make 360 payments at $1,200. That means we are going to come up with $432,000. Did everybody get that? $432,000? Minus what? Our principal, which was two hundred. dollars That means that our interest on that loan, if we paid it full out, would be $232,000. That would be the total interest we paid on that loan. Okay? That's what you would do. That's, that's the number, does not change, all right? So you take your monthly payments, you'd multiply it by the length of your loan, you'd subtract your original borrowed, what you originally borrowed, that's the principal, and the rest is interest. The rest is interest. If I am, let's say we change this. All right, I'm making a payment, $1,200 a month. That's my principal and interest, right? You're with me on that one? Okay. I'm making $1,200, I'm paying $1,200 a month. So I'm going to make 360 payments. But let's change that. Let's make it a 20-year loan. Okay? Let's make it a 20-year loan. Well, obviously, we'd have to bounce up that, that ratio. So let's leave it at 360. I'm going to make 360 loans payments for 30 years, right? 12 times 30 years, 12 months, 360 payments. Every month, I'm going to pay that 1,200, principal and interest, principal and interest, principal and interest. Well, we're going to figure out how many dollars we're going to pay for all of that. So when if we borrow 200,000 at 6%, for 30 years, it's going to come to our payment's going to be legitimate $1,200. That's real. Okay. So now we got to figure out how much we're going to pay over the life of the loan if we paid it out. So if we multiply that 1,200 times 360 payments, ultimately we'd write a check to the bank for $432,000. It's a lot of scratch. And I only owe them for $200,000. So the rest, the other 232,000, is gotta be what? It's gotta be the interest. 
got to be the interest, right? That's the balance over time. So you're actually paying what a hundred and um, I don't know, roughly on two hundred thousand, about one hundred and fifteen percent on the loan, one hundred and twenty percent on the loan. Okay, so that's how this loan chart works, really. All right, and again, our true cost of the mortgage is going to be four hundred eight dollars, but really, interest is going to be in this particular case. All right, don't use this. We're using our example from before. All right. But if we could use their example, $200,000 mortgage for 30 years at 5.5%, they're going to tell me in this chart, they're going to pay $208,000 in interest for $200,000. So that's how mortgage works. That's amortization over time. Okay. So we go to the bank and we say, Mr. Bank, I need money. And the bank says, yeah, that's all good, Sam. How much money you got? And I got to say, well, I don't have much. How much can you lend me? And Mr. Bank will say, well, we'll give you, we can lend you, your credit's pretty good. We can lend you about 90% of the loan of what you need of the purchase price. So I'm going to have to figure out the loan to value. I'm going to have to figure out how much I need to bring. Now, the bank, by the way, is only going to lend on what? The appraisal price? That's going to be the max. They're going to lend on the lower of the price that you negotiated or the appraisal. They are not going to lend above the appraisal. So if we have an appraisal price for $100,000, and the bank is going to lend me 90% of that, okay? I'm going to have to take my loan, all right, my value, and multiply that 90% times my value, and it's going to give me what? They're going to give me $90,000, loan to value, which means what? I'm going to divide one by the other. I'm going to divide by loan, divided by my value, and I'm going to get a percentage. If they were going to give me 75% of that, I would have to put up what? 25,000 of my own money, right? 75% of 100, they're going to lend me 75,000. I'm going to have to come up with the other 25. In this particular case, I'm going to have to come up with the other 10. And that's just using a round number. But that's how you figure out loan to value. It's relatively easy. You know how it is. You all bought houses, you all check every day your equity in the house, and then you see how much you owe. I'm certain that in your mind, in your heart of hearts, in the back of your head, you are you know what the loan to value of your house is. Well, I only owe 150,000, this house is worth 300, I got, I'm good. I only owe 50%. Follow? You do it every day, you just didn't put any name on it. That's how you determine this loan to value, the loan to value. If I'm going to borrow um, $235,000, if I'm going to borrow two hundred thirty, dollars uh, I'm sorry, let me change that. If my house is worth $235,000 and the bank is going to say, insist that I put $25, 25% down, how much are they going to lend me? And how much do I have to put down? The cost of the house is $235,000, and the bank says, I have to put 25% down. How much are they going to lend me, and how much do I have to put down? Okay, how much, so how much do I have to put down? The loan is going to be $176,250, right? So we're going to take that $235,000, and they're going to lend me 75%. So that's going to be um, 176, what did I say, 176, 250, right? And now I'm going to have to pay the balance. So I'm either going to have to multiply that 235 by 25% or just subtract 176, 250 and come up with what, 58, 750? It's not that hard. It's not that hard. The key to this is that the bank will only lend on the appraised value or the lower sales price, all right? That's the key. You, you, you might want to purchase a house, but the appraisal comes in differently. 
they're going to lay, uh, if the appraisal is lower, that's what they're going to lend on. All right. If the sales price is lower, that's what they're going to lend on. All right. So that's really going to be what it's all about. If the bank lends you more than 80%, they're going to charge you, let's say they lend you 90% of the loan in this particular instance that we're looking at this example. They usually have a cutoff point of 80%. If they lend more than that, they're going to make you pay private mortgage insurance. Now, understand that the bank is self-insured for 80% onward, downward. But if they give you 90%, that means that there's 10% gap there. What they're going to do is they're going to charge you an insurance premium. This is your PMI, private mortgage insurance. They're going to charge you uh, insurance to cover that 10% of your loan. That's why the minute, the minute you get down past that 80% threshold, then they'll take that off. You can ask to have that removed. Okay. But they're self insured up to that 80% line. You have to pay the difference. So if they give you 90%, you're going to pay PMI on that 10%. All right. So usually that's how they do it. Okay. Private mortgage insurance, that's when you pay that PMI. And then you make enough payments to get down below that um, get down below that 80% threshold and you could get it removed. You just go to the bank and say, hey, I'm a current payer. I haven't made any mistakes and I want that removed and they'll take it off of you. Okay, they'll take it off of you. Equity, remember before we said that, hey, I have, my house is worth 300,000 and I only owe 150. How much equity do you have in your house at that point? You all know what it is. I just put a name on it. How much do you put in your pocket if you sell it tomorrow? 150,000, right? If your house is worth 275 and you only owe 130, how much do you owe? How much is yours? How much equity do you have? 275 minus 130. You have $145,000 in equity. Simple. This is stuff you do every day, you just don't have a name. Okay? Just don't have a name. That's your equity. That's your value. All right? Your personal value. All right. The other thing is usury. And how this ended up in this chapter, I don't know. But usury is, uh, for lack of a better term, you know what loan sharking is? All right? If you know what loan sharking is, basically, this is lending money at a rate of interest above the maximum rate that's set by uh, North Carolina law. Now, without writing, North Carolina says that you should charge an 8% interest rate. However, if you get into a contract with somebody, as long as both parties agree, they can charge any percent of interest they choose. And that's the law. So, I mean, I don't know if you've ever dealt with title, uh, people who have title companies or for your car. They charge huge, huge interest payments, 35 and 40% on your title loan, okay? That money is huge, okay? But they can do it because you signed the, you signed the consent agreement. As long as you agreed to it, they can charge whatever they want. If they're just doing it orally, I believe it's 8%, okay? 8%. But otherwise, if they're charging you much more than what the 8% is orally, like they're charging you 8% a week, that's usury. That's loan sharking. It's just a fancy word for loan sharking. They can't do that. It's against the law. Okay. Has anybody ever heard of discount points? Points on interest? Somebody's paying points? No? Okay. If somebody offers to pay points, one point, the word point <clears throat> in a financial tra transaction means a percent. So one point is 1% 1 of the loan fact, of the loan value. So if I'm borrowing $100,000 loan, the discount point would be 1%, okay? So I pay um, $1,000, that would be a discount point. So 1%, one, uh, one point is equal to 1% of the loan amount paid upfront by the borrower, but what it does is prepaid interest. So this lowers your interest rate by an eighth of a point for every point that you pay, okay? 
Or on the other side of it, it raises the profit for the lender by one eighth of a point. Okay. So maybe they're saying, we'll give you a 4% interest rate, but you got to pay two points. So what that means is that 2%, you pay 2% of the loan, you're still going to get your 4% interest rate, but that 2% of the loan gives the lender a profit of what, two eighths or a quarter, right? Because you paid, you prepaid 2% of the interest. So it's profit. Or let's say that your interest rate, let's say your, your, um, Let's say your loan is um, three hundred thousand. You're going to take a loan for three hundred thousand, and that loan is going to be at um, six and uh, six and a half. All right, which equals just for picture sake six and four eighths. I think six and four eighths or six and a half is too much. So I want a 6% interest rate for my loan. So what I can do is for every 1% I pay for my loan as a fee to the bank, I lower my interest rate by an eighth of a point. So in this particular case, I would have to pay 4%, four points. So at closing, the bank will give me a 6% interest rate, but I'm gonna get a charge of 4% of my loan amount. 4% of my loan amount, I do believe, comes to what? $12,000? I'm gonna get a fee on my closing for $12,000. So really all I'm doing is I'm prepaying my interest. If I give them that 12,000, I'm gonna get a 6% loan rate and I am prepaying the interest, I get a lower rate. I bought it down by 4%, all right? I paid four points, bought it down by four eighths, so now I get it six. So the good thing about this is that points are tax deductible. Points are also tax deductible by the buyer, regardless of who pays them. So if grandma pays you as a housewarming gift in points, you get to deduct them on your taxes. If the seller pays you points, um, for, you know, so that you'll close, you get to deduct them on your taxes. It's prepaid interest, okay? Prepaid interest. That's really what points are, okay? And it, de it decreases your interest rate to the consumer, okay? If I have a $200,000 loan, one point would cost $2,000. Assuming the interest rate on the mortgage is 5%, and each point lowers the interest rate by one eighth of a percent, two discount points would reduce the interest rate to 4.75, right? 4.75. 0.25 is what, two eighths, right? One eighth is 0.125 for those of you who are counting, right? Those of you counting, one eighth is one is 0.125. So if we bought two points, it would lower our interest rate to 4.75 on this $200,000 loan. Um, do can they? Sure, they absolutely can. Do uh, people ask their lender for points to pay points? Yes. Usually, you'll see lately that the banks are charging points because people want a lower interest rate over time, and they're paying points to get that now. So. Um, if you look at a lot of bank sheets lately, because the rates are going up, the points are also going up so that you can get that little bit lower rate. Um, you may have to, if you want to use like a 6% rate, you may have to pay two points um, so that just a fee to the bank so that the bank can make a little bit more money on what the interest rates are. They'll keep the rate low. Now there's reasons for this too, because it's going to lower your payment, right? It's going to lower your payment. All right, let's do the, um, let's do the next couple of examples and then we'll we'll wheel back to this, all right? So another example, one coin is 1% of the loan. If we are purchasing $265,000 worth of house, we are going to get an 80% conventional loan. Now keep in mind, points are not paid on the value of the house, they're paid on the loan amount. 
on the loan amount. 265,000 times 80%, that's what they're gonna lend us, is $212,000. I wanna buy two points, two points. So at closing, I'm gonna take that 212,000 multiplied by 2%, I'm gonna to have to pay an additional $4,240 for closing, all right, to get that lower interest rate, okay? That's two points. If it's a discount point, you're gonna get a break on the, on the um, interest rate, okay? If it is a loan origination fee, it's still the same way, it's still called points, it's still a percent, but all this loan origination fee does is increase the profit to the bank. It's a fee, but they all charge them, all right? So in this particular case, in a loan origination fee, the purchase price is 265,000. The origination fee is 1% of the loan amount. So if you're getting an 80% conventional loan, you're gonna take your 80%, multiply it by 265, and that means your loan amount is gonna be $212,000. 1% of 212 is 200, uh, $2,120 loan origination fee. That is simply a fee. You get nothing in return other than the loan. A discount point reduces your interest rate. Why would I pay discount points? Is the question you're asking. I get it. I know what you are. I got to know how long I'm going to keep the house. Right? If I'm going to sell and I'm going to flip this house in three years, I'm going to lose money by buying points. I'm not going to make any money. But if I'm going to keep the house for a long period of time, I might be able to make some money. So let's use a hypothetical here. Let's use our same hypothetical that we were using before. We have $200,000. And let's say that it was going to be at six and um, uh, two eighths or six and a quarter. And we wanted it to go down to 6%. So we did it, we bought, we paid two points. We paid 2% um, uh, of that is $2,000 we paid. And we got a 6% interest rate, which means that our payment for the month is going to be, remember our payment from before, it was $1,200 a month, principal and interest, right? So our payment for the month now, because we paid that 12 is $1,200 which is where we want to be. But I'm $2,000 in the hole here. Well, if at six and two eighths, at six and a quarter, somebody at three, um, somebody who's still got the loan factor chart up, I don't think I have the loan factor chart up. Let me look. Yeah, I do, hang on. The loan factor chart for six and a quarter for 30 years is $6.16. So that would be um, $6.16 times 200 borrowed. So that means if, at regular price, my, it, it would be $12.32 a month if I paid six and a quarter, all right? So let me go back to my um, screen here. All right. So if I paid this six and two eighths, my payment would be $12.32. But I'm only going to pay six. So my payment's now. 1200 but I'm 2000 in the hole. So every month, I'm saving off of that original price, $32. How many months do I have to pay for this house to get my $2,000 back? So if I, I'm going to divide 32 into 2000 right? So if I take that um, 2000 and I divide it by 32, I'm gonna to have to live here 62 and a half months before I break even. Five years, let's say six years. So my decision has to be, am I gonna live here for six years? And if that's yes, after month number 62 and a half, I'm making $32 a month. But until then, I'm collecting, I'm, I'm getting this money back. So if I'm going to flip this house in three years, should I pay the $2,000? No, I'm going to lose money. 
But if I plan on this being my forever house, the two thousand dollars looks like a pretty good deal. And after six years, uh, after the sixty-two months, I'm going to be saving thirty-two dollars a month on my mortgage. Oh, and this should be four thousand. My bad. All right, so we got to figure that out again. So this is going to be one hundred and twenty-five months. Nice snag. So it's ten and um, uh, ten and a half years. I'm sorry, I did one uh, two points. Um, I did one point. I need two points. So I'm going to have to pay four thousand. So this is not correct. It should be one hundred twenty-five. So now I have to stay for ten and a half years. Now I got to decide whether it's worth it or not. Right? Good catch, Tyler. Hey, don't be afraid to correct me if I make a mistake. I'm all good. I don't have a problem with that. Um, so if I'm going to stay here, if this is going to be my forever house, and I'm going to be here more than 10 years, then this is a good deal. If, I, if not, then it's not a good deal. Then I'll be losing money if I'm going to sell it before 10 years. And that's really how, what you got to look at. What's the cost going to be at the higher interest rate? What's the cost going to be at the lower interest rate? What's my principal and interest going to be? And how much is my, <clears throat> how much is the, uh, is it going to cost me for points? And how many months do I have to live here to make up that money? to save that bit of money, right? So all of those things have to go into your factors. And that's why you would take a look at this mathematically, right? And say, yeah, is this worth it for me? I don't know. So that's that's why you would pay points if you're gonna stay there. If I'm gonna flip this house, there ain't no way I'd pay points. I'd have the seller pay points because I wouldn't have, it wouldn't have to come out of my pocket and I could take off the taxes. That would be okay. If I got a gift, I would have it at the points. Well, I didn't have to pay it. Right. Now, what we were looking at as far as mortgage payments go, that 30-year loan for um, 360 months at 6%, that is a fully amortized loan. Now, it could be for less time. It could be for 20 years. It could be for 15 years. It could be for whatever. But that means that at the end, you're going to make equal payments every month. And at the end, you're going to pay it off. It's going to come to zero. That is a fully amortized loan. And that's usually the one that people get. We ran into trouble with interest-only loans. And that's what happened back in 2005 and 6. They were given a lot of interest-only loans. And it would be a five or six year interest loan only loan. And then the, the whole principal was due again. They figured that the prices of the house was were gonna go up forever. And then they would just refinance and go. Well, when the prices came down, chickens came home to roost. So all they were doing was paying interest only. So this is called a term loan or a straight loan. Okay, straight term loan. This is interest only. And at the end of that period of time, you have a balloon payment for everything you owe. All right. A lot of um, home equity lines of credit have what's called, they'll give you a 30-year mortgage for the first 10 years, you pay interest only. And then what will happen is after that, it turns into a 20-year amortized loan. So that's a combination of the both. All right. So you have a draw period of 10 years and then at the end. So that is an interest only, um, that is an interest only loan. And sooner or later, you got to pay the whole thing, all right? Sooner or later, it's going to happen. We also have what's called an adjustable rate mortgage, an ARM, an adjustable rate mortgage. What this is, is that you're going to get a, a teaser rate or a, short, a small rate up front, and then it's going to be adjusted in any kind of period. So what you might see, what you might see, is you might see a 4% interest rate, but you're going to see some fractions, 5 to 6. What that says is that we will give you this 4% interest rate for five years. At the end of that five years, we're going to look at either, um, usually it's the London interbank rate, LIBOR. You might have heard of LIBOR. Usually that's the rate, but everybody uses different rates. What they're going to do is they're going to look at the LIBOR rate or whatever rate they're using, and they're going to see what the current interest rate is. And they're going to look, and they can raise you every year. They can raise you two points. 
So if the rates have gone up to like say six and a half percent, they can raise you to 6%, right? But they can do it next year too. And then they can do it the year after and everything else to a maximum of an additional six points. So they can raise it two points a year every year after the first five to a maximum of six more points. So this loan after um, uh, two, four, six, right? Um, five, six, seven, eight years. After eight years, can be a 10% loan. Okay, that's an adjustable rate mortgage. Now, are these good for people who are gonna be there for a long time? No. These are good for people who are gonna flip. These are good for contractors, right? If I'm a builder, I'm gonna go in and get a low teaser rate. Am I gonna be there five years from now? No, I'm going to be sold out and built and gone, right? So I, it doesn't matter to me what that number is, right? What this, these numbers are, it doesn't matter. So if I'm going to flip or I'm going to be there for a short term or I'm a contractor, this works out pretty good. But if I'm here for a forever house or a long-term house, this doesn't, this doesn't make any sense to me, right? Unless you're going to refinance after you get to this point. But well, you got to remember to do that. And you better hope that you're in the same position that you were prior. Yes, yes, right? So that's what an adjustable rate mortgage will do for you. It's good for some people, it's not good for others, all right? And that rate fluctuates up and down, like I said, when it gets there. Short-term ownership, it will work very well. If you like this video, feel free to share it with a friend. For more real estate education content, please subscribe to the channel. From all of us at Seacoast Real Estate Academy, thank you for watching.